Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. We're glad you made it out in the weather safely and everything else. Um, and if you are a visitor, welcome today. There's a guest book on the left on a little podium. We ask that you would sign that this morning. A few announcements from your bulletin we'd like to highlight and let you know about a few opportunities, but a special opportunity today. It's for all of you who are welcome to receive Holy Communion today. All right, uh, Pastor Don will be over here on this aisle here. You can form two lines and come down this way. Put out your hand for a wafer. If you need a gluten-free wafer, let him know that. He'll have that for you. You guys will all turn to the right if you've got your bread, and there'll be a communion server standing right around here with a divided cup. The wine is dark in that cup. The grape juice is light. Dip them whichever you'd want. In your mouth, then find your seats. All right? You guys will be doing the same thing right around here. Dip in your mouth, back to your seats. Okay? I will be doing the same thing over here on this line. Um, form two limes down this aisle here. Way for a gluten-free wafer. Wine or grape juice that way. Wine or grape juice to that way. All right? Communion will take like two whole minutes. It's going to be awesome. But we're glad that you are all welcome to receive this. Jesus said to do that, do this in honor and memory of him. You are all welcome if you feel called to come forward and receive the bread and the wine today. All right? A few announcements from your bulletin. I want to highlight them. I hope you all made it to the donut room for donuts and coffee and some fun things. Um, I hope you also saw some opportunities to give back during the Christmas season. Um, We have two different Christmas trees in the gathering area here, and there's one in the donut room. All those have different ornaments on them, different ways of giving back. Um, One of them is a good gifts tree through the ELCA. If you want to give through that, that's an opportunity. The other two trees are ways of giving to our local community um, through our homeless shelters and some other places. Um, So if you like, there are little ornaments on there. You can bring those gifts in if you feel like God is calling you to help someone else in need. All right? And if you would like to celebrate our Christmas time by ordering a poinsettia in honor or in memory of anyone, there are envelopes in the gathering area. You can do that today. All the proceeds will go to Lutheran World Relief and our local homeless shelters. And if you want to give in honor and memory and don't want to plant, you can give right to that as well. That option's on the envelopes as well. And don't forget to look at our Christmas schedule coming up with our Christmas Eve services, our Christmas Day, and all of our Advent services as normal on Sunday. And don't forget our Christmas program. Sunday School will be performing their program on December 16th at 1030. Um, Mark your calendars for that and start staking out your pew now, everybody. Okay? Start doing it. Um, And we ask if you have a child in the program, um, any family, we ask you bring a dozen and a half cookies. We'll have some fun cookie time after the service on the 16th. All right? Um, Don't forget to check in today, too, on your Facebook apps or your Instagram on your smartphones. Um, You can check in at Peace Lutheran Church, and that will go to help give literacy books for kids in Africa. It doesn't cost you a dime. Take a picture, write something down from the sermon, something that gives you hope today, and it will give something good to someone else in another part of the world. All right? Now, if you are feeling like super stressed about everything, you're like, Pastor Stewart, it's the first Sunday in Advent, and I'm not ready for Christmas. I'm super stressed out. Nurse Marsha will check your blood pressure today. We don't want to see you in the hospital. Check it out today. Okay? Nurse Marsha, Nurse Joyce, get it free today. All right? Now, those are all opportunities. We hope you'll pray about those things and see where God is calling you to grow and to give back. Um, But we're going to make you grow now. Why don't you stand up and say good morning to the people around you. is in the green hymnal if you like the music. All the words will also be on the screen. Come thou almighty king, LBW number 522.
and adore. We continue our worship this morning with a time of confession and forgiveness. We gather ourselves together this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment in silence as we prepare our hearts for our confession. And we continue. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake he forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Our hymn of praise is Light the Candle. the Advent candle one Now the waiting has begun We have started on our way Time to think of Christmas Day Candle, candle burning bright Shining in the cold winter night Candle, candle burning bright Fill our hearts with Christmas light The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Faithful God, you proved your faithfulness to your people when they cried out to you in distress. We pray that you would be present in our distress and show us how to be faithful to you in the midst of suffering and pain. We pray these things in the name of the one who gives us the light of hope, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We'll continue with the Bible reading. A reading today comes from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw, O Lord, how long 
shall I cry for help, and you will not listen, or cry to you violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me, strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack, and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous, therefore judgment comes forth perverted. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It surely, it will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them. But the righteous live by their faith. Though the fig tree does not blossom, and no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt in the God of my salvation. Here ends the reading. And boys and girls, would you please come on up? I got two boys. Here comes Lucas. I got three boys. Good, because this is kind of more of a boy sermon anyway. Come here, guys. Happy Sunday. You guys having a good day so far? Yeah. You guys like to wait? Is waiting fun? No, you don't like to wait? You ever been in the car, you know, and you're on a trip, and it seems like it's going to go on forever? Have you ever said, how long till we get there? Have you ever done that? Yeah, sometimes maybe. Or you're really, really hungry, and you don't know when supper's going to be ready, and you finally say, how long till we eat? You guys ever done that? Yeah, how long till we eat? Or maybe you're in church, and it seems to go on and on and on. Have you ever thought... How long till this is over? How long? That's, yeah, it takes a while, doesn't it? Okay. You know, this is kind of a bad time of the year for some kids. Because it's a how long time. You know what's coming? Christmas. You guys ever seen a calendar before? Yeah. See that day right there? You know what that is? That's Christmas. That's a good day, right? You guys looking forward to Christmas? That'd be good. Guess where we are? Right there. 23 days until Christmas. That's how long it's going to be. That's like forever, 23 days. It's hard to wait, isn't it? You know, it's hard to wait for something good, but it's also hard to wait for something bad to stop. Okay? When things are bad, bad things are happening, sometimes it's hard for, to wait for them to stop. Today I read a lesson from a guy named Habakkuk. All right? Habakkuk was having a hard time. Because there were a lot of bad things happening. There was fighting in his land. People were getting killed. People were cheating each other. So he asked God a question. You know what he asked? How long, O Lord? How long is all this bad stuff going to go on? And God didn't say two weeks. It'll be just two weeks. All right? Or it'll be two years. He doesn't say that. God says, it's going to happen. Everything bad's going to stop. But... The people who really have life together, who can get through life, they live by faith. They believe that God is going to take care of them. That gives you hope, doesn't it? One of the things Habakkuk didn't have that we have is Advent. Today is the first Sunday in Advent. In Advent, we remember three things. You guys ready? First of all, remember Jesus came. You guys know that story, right? Baby in the manger, came to Bethlehem, grew up to be a guy who helped people all the time. Told them all about God's love. Died on the cross. Came back again. Said, even though you make mistakes, I forgive you. Even though you get afraid, you know you don't have to be afraid. Because I'll take care of you even after you die. Jesus came. You know what else? He's coming back someday. Jesus is coming back someday. And he said, there won't be any more war. And there won't be any more fighting. And people won't cheat each other anymore. And nobody will ever cry again. That's something to look forward to, isn't it? We can believe that. Yeah. Yeah. And then the third thing, 
Jesus says he's here. He's here right now. He said, my love is with you right now. And when you're happy, you can be even happier. And when you're sad, you can know I'm with you and you're going to be okay. That's a good thing, right? When we believe what God tells us, we can get through the most difficult times in life. And we can help other people do that too. You know, some people use a calendar to get ready for Christmas. What do we use here at church? Advent wreath. You guys remember the Advent wreath? Yeah. Every week we light another candle. Come on up here, guys. All right. This is the first week in Advent, okay? So how many candles do you think we light? Five. No, just one. Five. Just one, all right? The white one. No, we're going to start the blue one, okay? First so you guys can... can, one, can you, one, then white one? I'll tell you in a minute. Okay, how many... Can you guys count to one? Can you count to one? One. Okay, that's the first candle. This week we light one. Next week we light two. In two weeks we light three. We'll light the pink one because that's the rejoice candle. Then we'll light four. And guess what happens when we light the white one? It's Christmas. Absolutely right. Can you guys wait? Can you wait? Did you guys get advent calendars? No. You didn't? You got to have an advent did, did you get you got one of those? This is a different one. Okay, you see where number one is there? That was yesterday. You can open that door. See where number two is? That's today. You can open that door. And then tomorrow when it's December 3rd, you can do number three. And then on Tuesday when it's December 4th, you can do number four. And when it gets to 24, guess what? Christmas, okay? It's going to be hard to wait, okay? Do, do one at a time. Now remember, waiting is hard. But right now, you don't have to wait for this. The children's over. Children's sermon is over. And you don't have to wait to go back to your seats, guys. There you go. All right. I'm sure they've had trouble waiting in the past. A grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There we go. The wildfires in California have gotten a lot of attention this year. Now, there were wildfires throughout the western United States, but the ones in California got the most attention, especially two of them. There was the Woolsey Fire down near Los Angeles. That got a lot of attention. And then the Camp Fire that was up in northern California. It got a lot of attention, and so did the city of Paradise, California. Sounds like a great place, right? I live in paradise. A lot of people retired and moved to paradise. They thought it would be the perfect place. But when the campfire broke out, they quickly told the people of paradise to get out. The fire was coming in their direction, and they didn't have time to spare. And the people who predicted the fire were right. The fire rushed through that area and right through paradise. Now, almost everybody escaped. Some people died, but almost everybody escaped. But right now... There's nothing left to paradise. It's a pile of ashes. Block after block of that city were incinerated. And the people must have been happy they survived. But they also must have wondered, how are we going to keep going? How can we keep going on when we're having this burden to, to carry with us? Now, maybe it would help them to know that other people have gone through what they've gone through and survived. Some of you might be familiar with the Peshtigo fire. It was almost 150 years ago, but it was even bigger than the campfire. It was almost 2,000 square miles of land that were involved in this fire. They call it the Peshtigo fire because Peshtigo was burned to the ground, but there were 11 other communities in northeastern Wisconsin that were destroyed. On the bottom of this graphic, it said there were 600 estimated deaths. That's not right. They know there were at least 1,500 deaths. And there's a pretty good chance there might have been up to 2,500 people killed in the Peshtigo fire. Right? They had virtually no warning. The fire came up, and it devastated communities and rural areas and everything in between. 
How many of you have ever been to Peshtigo? You've been to Peshtigo? All right. It doesn't look like that, does it? All right. The only thing you'll see in Peshtigo that makes you think of a fire are the fire museum and the sign said, City Rebuilt from the Ashes. Right now, it looks like any other city. The people in Peshtigo look like everybody else. The people in that area survived. They went on, right? Do you think the people of paradise might be a little bit comforted to know other people have gone through what we've gone through, and they've gone on. They've carried on. Knowing that other people have gone through difficult times helps give us hope. The Middle East has been a troubled place for thousands of years. There's been war after war and conflict after conflict, one country after the other, one group at the other fighting with each other. And it has gone on and on. Even today, especially in Afghanistan, in Syria, there's constant tension. Cities are being destroyed. One army after another goes through an area and devastates it. And even the most hardened soldier must wonder how much more people can take. The question is, how long, O Lord? How long can this go on? How long do we have to go through this horrible torture? That's what Habakkuk asks in our, in our lesson today. Habakkuk asks the question, how long, O Lord? The people of Israel had gone through some very difficult times. Two weeks ago, I talked about the Assyrians. The Assyrians had come down, and they'd taken over the northern part of Israel, and they had made those people captive, and it was a difficult time. They were in power for about a hundred years, and then they were defeated. They were defeated by the Babylonians. And the bad thing was the Babylonians were worse than the Assyrians. Not only did they take over the northern part of Israel, they took over the southern part too. And whatever they wanted that they thought was valuable, they took to ba- back to Babylon. And people they wanted to use as servants and slaves, they found the best and the brightest people and took them into cab- captivity and brought them to Babylon. And they destroyed everything they didn't want, including the temple. And so the people who survived, the people who were left behind, there was no hope. Everything they valued was gone. There was no hope for the future. Habakkuk makes that plea to God that he needs hope, right? He says, look around, there's destruction and violence. There are people who are taking justice and making it a mockery. The wicked take good people and they use them. And everything that we value is turned upside down. And he asks, how long, O Lord? And God answers. God said, I want you to write this down. Put it on a tablet. Put it on the sign outside. Anybody going past County Road U at 45 miles an hour will be able to read the sign. And the lesson on the sign shall be, it's coming. The right time is coming when everything like this will stop. But he goes on to say, right people who think they got it all together, they got it wrong. The people who really have it together live by faith. If you really want to get through the tough times, Give me your trust. Believe in me. Live by faith. The most popular, the most well-known part of Habakkuk, the righteous shall live by faith. To be righteous can mean you follow the rules. To be righteous means you can't get your life in order. But what it really means is to have the right relationship with God. A relationship of trust. A relationship of believing in him. And a relationship with other people. Knowing that God cares about us, we can care for them. The righteous shall live by faith. And faith gives us hope. We begin the Advent season today. It's one of my favorite times of the year. It's a time of hope. A time when we hear the story of God's care for us. And it says Jesus will come again. That's his promise. And when he comes... Wars will end. All the pain and suffering, 
people go through will be no more. No one will cry ever again because everything will be the way God wants it to be. Jesus says, I will come again. And we remember that he came. We're about ready to celebrate Christmas and the beautiful story of the baby in the manger. Great story. But he also grew up to be a man who shared God's love by what he said and by what he did. And Jesus knew destruction and violence because he was tortured and nailed to a cross. And then he came back. He said, because of what I've done, all the mistakes you've made are washed away. You have forgiveness. Because I rose from the dead, so will you. Because I have life after death, so will you. You don't have to worry about anything. Not even death can separate you from me. And because of Jesus, because he came, we know that we are in God's loving care. And that's the third part of Advent. Jesus promised, I'm with you. I'm with you always. Nothing will ever keep me from letting go of you. Always. Habakkuk asked the question, how long? How long will bad things happen? But God gives an answer. You know how long I will love you? Always. Grace is being baptized today. You know what the promise is? He will be loved always. And when he knows that, he can get through even the worst of times. When we know that, we can get through even the worst of times. We have hope. How long, O oh Lord? You ever ask that? You read the paper, you watch the news, you think, how long is this going to go on? You see the trouble your friends go through, your family, and you wonder, how long can they hang on? How long does this have to go on? The things that happen in our own lives. We wonder, how long can I handle this? How long must this go on? And God says, believe in me. Just have faith. I'm going to take care of you. Because I've been with you. And I'll be with you. And I am with you even now. You are in my care always. And because of that, we have hope. We have hope for the future. Now, the third part of our lesson today has Habakkuk saying we can rejoice. And rejoicing is a great thing. But if you look over there, the pink banner to the third one, that's the rejoicing week. And that's when we'll talk about rejoicing. Amen. The peace of God which goes beyond all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. The blue hymn knows where our next hymn comes from. It's number 675. We walk by faith and not by sight.
As God's people, we are blessed to gather together to remind it again about the hope that God has given to each and every one of us. And we can respond in many different ways. To the gather, we'll respond together with the Apostles' Creed this morning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, except for Grayson, his mom, his aunt. You guys come on up. Amanda and Alicia, you guys come on up here too. Yeah. He could walk up by himself, but he kind of, no, he needs you guys. For sure. Yeah, you guys can come stand right over here. Yep, and his hat's off. That's good. It would get a little wet today because we're going to use some water here, Grayson. You like water? Yeah, we hope so because you're going to find out real quick, real fast, what the water's like. Now, water is what God uses to wash and nourish the earth, and it is what we use to wash, nourish, and refresh ourselves. And God uses water to cleanse us spiritually and to initiate us as Christians. Baptism is the means by which God the Father creates new daughters and new sons. And in the waters of baptism, we are joined to the death and resurrection of our Lord. Born again by water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the body of Christ the Church. Living in fellowship with him and with his people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Now I ask, who presents this child to receive the sacrament of baptism? Well, you both, you can both say, we do. That's you too, Alicia, yeah. <laughs> you have the responsibility to follow through in our Lord's command to teach him everything that God has given to him. It's also your privilege and your responsibility to teach him the Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and that as he grows in years, you would place in his hands the Bible and bring him to the services in God's house so that you pro- and provide for his instruction in the Christian faith. So continuing in the covenant of his baptism, he may grow up as a faithful child of God forever. Now I ask, do you promise that you will faithfully care for him and help him in every way as God gives you opportunity so that he may bear witness to the faith we profess? Will you strive to live the Christian lifestyle of love, forgiveness, and service day by day as an example to this child? If so, you too can say yes by the help of God. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus to reject sin. Confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? If so, respond, I do. I now take your child to baptize him. Jesus said to go everywhere. Go to all places and make new sons and daughters, make new brothers and sisters. He said to go everywhere and tell them the good news. And then in baptism, Grayson will be given several things really good things. He'll be given the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and eternal life. He'll be adopted by God, become a Christian, and be received as a member of God's family, the church. Now, we'll see, Grayson, if you actually do like to have water on your head or not here. Okay, buddy? All right. Grayson Donald, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We baptized your hand, too. That was nice. That was good, buddy. That works too, little man. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has caused your rebirth and adoption in the kingdom of God by water and his Holy Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sin, may he strengthen you with his grace for life with him forever. Amen. God's peace be with you, grace, and receive the sign of the cross upon your brow and upon your breast as a sign and token of whose you are. You are God's child, and nothing will ever, ever be able to take that away. Now I'll return to you, God's child. He's no longer yours to do with as you see fit. So remember to call upon God to help you raise his child. He didn't mind that one bit. He's like, hey, bring on some more water. It feels good. I'll take a bath. Whatever that word, the words you were saying, it was great. And now he's not sure about you guys because you're his newest members of his family here. See these weird people? That's part of your church. I know your mom and your aunt are going to help you and your family are going to help you know God's grace. But all these other people too, we're called the church and you're a part of that too, Grayson. I'm not sure what you're looking at over there, but it's pretty cool. Must be something. I don't know. He's just, yeah, you want to see everybody? There, is that better? All right. And we're all going to help you to know God's love. Will you help them know God's love, everybody? Yeah, you can clap for him. He did great. (laughs) 
You didn't even cry out, Grayson. Here's mom. Back to you, little man. All right. All right, Alicia, you can hold some wet stuff. That's always fun. Those are all the words we said for him. And we got a few other things for you guys, too. Here's a certificate for Grayson. And Alicia, that's you as a good sponsor. And we give you guys a Bible. Part of the promises are about that. You can take that, start reading the stories to him. And for you, Amanda, that's for you. A flower. Thanks. You guys can have a seat. Thanks. And would the rest of you please stand. We'll continue with our prayers this morning. And we're going to pray for Grayson as he was named and claimed in the wars of baptism this morning. We're also going to pray for Liv and Eric Overgaard, their newborn twins of Laura and Jeff Overgaard. And also we have a few people who are in need of healing in God's presence. We pray for Claudia Coles that she's at Rennes um, receiving therapy. We pray for Paula Koken who will be having surgery this week. And we also pray for Scott and Carla Heinz and their family. Scott's father died this week. I will end each petition by praying, Lord, in your mercy. And your response is, hear our prayer. As we await the coming of Christ, we pray in hope for the church, for the world, and for all of creation. Merciful God, we pray you would guide your church. Help us all to remember the hope that you have given to all of us. Through whatever's happening in our lives, we always have you, your grace, and your love. Help us to know these gifts and help us to share it wherever we may be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we pray you would help us to grow within our peace and that you would raise leaders in all nations and all walks of life in all places to be people of mercy, of justice, and of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we thank you for new life. We thank you especially this day as Grayson was named and claimed in the waters of baptism. And we thank you for Liv and Eric as they were born into this world. May you bless bless them and all your children so that they may grow in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we pray for those who are in need of your healing presence, whether that be mind, body, or spirit, or whether these people need to hear promises and hopes that you give to all people. We pray this day for Claudia, for Paula, and for Scott and Carla and their family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we take a moment of silence now to offer the prayers from our hearts to God who promises to hear us. By the gift of your presence with us, God, you know all the things we have cried out to you, but we pray that you would answer our prayers Answer them according to your own will, your own way, and your own time. And as we wait, we pray for your strength, your understanding, and your patience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Confident that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we pray to you these prayers and those unspoken in the name of Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated, and we'll receive your offering. Please rise as we sing our offering song.
Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer. Grace our table with your presence, and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. And let us pray together. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. We pray our Lord's prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. This table has been prepared. All are welcome to come and receive this gift of God's grace. Please stand as you are able. 
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We sing our canticle. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia, alleluia. And let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this gift of life and of hope that we have received here in this place. This bread and this wine, your body and your blood. May we both be so strengthened by this gift to go out into this world to share your hope. We pray this in Jesus' holy name and all God's people said, Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And all God's people said, Amen. Our sending song is, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.